Let's talk about the problems with penetration. Hi folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So here's an awesome weapon. It is the Spontoon Tomahawk from Ethan Blinkhorn at um, Ravensbeak Forge. And this weapon inspired me to make this video because some interesting comments came up when I first showed it on the channel when I did an unboxing in comparison to a normal Tomahawk. And a lot of people noted, yep, first of all, you can't really use it as a tool for much at all, except for killing things or people. Um, and it is a spike and it has lots of parallels in other parts of the world. There are other types of piercing, uh, shall we say dagger-like right-angled projection weapons. We can find them in Japan, we can find them in medieval Europe, we can find them in India, all over, all over Africa, all over the place. Okay, so we can find weapons like this in many different places at different times. And it has an inherent problem. Okay, now it's not to say it's not great. So one of the great things about weapons, now if we just go to another weapon here, so this is a 14th century Swedish battle axe by um, Tord at Thor's Forge. And this has got two options on it. And this is one that many of you will be familiar with even if you just look at fantasy art, for example, you'll be familiar with battle axes like this that have got an axe blade and a spike. Okay. Now, incidentally, I will be talking um, a little bit about the pole axe, which you'll notice doesn't have a spike on, but many pole axes do. Now, many people might think, well, why do you have a spike and an axe? Why would you need a blade and uh, a spike? When would you use those two things? Now, clearly, if you are going to hit someone, for example, who is wearing male armor, aka chain mail, then a very good way of getting through that armor would be to use the spike side. And indeed, if I put that down a minute and go to the famous Warhammer over here, this weapon is indeed pretty much uh, designed for that. And again, you'll notice that this has a hammer and a beak as opposed to the axe and a beak. And I think everybody probably realizes or thinks that that spike is for penetrating armor. More about that in a future video because I don't think that is, is as anything like as clear cut as lots of people assume it is. But nevertheless, uh, most people realize that that is for penetration, shall we say, whether it's of a type of armor plate? Mm, not, probably not. Um, if it's for penetrating mail, mm, maybe. If it's for penetrating maybe things like gambesons or, you know, padded armor, fabric armor, or if it's just for penetrating flesh, we agree that that is basically a piercing point. It is a focusing point, yeah? And uh, that is also true of an axe and it is also true of the spontoon tomahawk. But there's an inherent problem with these spikes. So think about what happens when you actually hit a target. And it doesn't matter whether it's an armored or an unarmored target for the purposes of this video. The problem is, is that the moment that, that goes in, it's gonna cause an awful lot of damage. But as I constantly try to explain on this um, channel, people don't instantly stop trying to fight back, even if they're grievously wounded. Sometimes people with a limb chopped off try and hit you back. Sometimes people with a really bad head wound try and uh, hit you back. And anyone who's involved in law enforcement or the military will know sometimes you shoot people and they shoot you back, okay? And this, of course, also applies to swords. And many times in the past, I have talked about the problem of thrusting with swords. Yes, it's more likely to be fatal. Yes, it has a longer reach. Yes, it can penetrate through clothing or armor more uh, easily than a cut can okay it has advantages definitely the thrust has advantages but the major disadvantage of a thrust and there are a few but one of the major disadvantages of a thrust is it when it enters the target in that time your weapon is stuck in the opponent and in that time they can hit you back okay so you're not even with an extreme example like a sword where you've thrust someone from a long way away with the point you are now that far away from them, and if they have a sword of equal length, they can stab you back. <laughs> um, and that's almost certainly one of the reasons that we get combinations of, for example, rapier and dagger, or sword and buckler, or whatever, whereby you can run a person through and still defend with your other object. So hopefully you can run them through and defend against their attempt to do the exact same thing to you at the same time, because otherwise there's nothing stopping them from doing it, except for maybe armor or whatever. Okay, so here's the problem. If you've got an ax like this and the other person has an ax like this, in the time that you embed, blam, unless you instantly kill them, so if you hit them in the head or the heart or something else which somehow instantly takes them out of action, I mean, 
pain, um, sort of shock, things that, you know, there are physiological effects that can stop a person hitting you back, just the, just the sheer pain of being hit. Um, but if that doesn't happen for some reason, if that goes into them in the exact same time that they have swung, they will embed their point in you. Okay, assuming you haven't struck behind a covered line, which is something that we teach in HEMA, um, or assuming you don't have a shield there to block, or a buckler, or whatever, dagger, whatever, or even just your arm, if you just stand there and swing at them and embed that point in them, they can do the same you. And moreover, if you want to hit them multiple times, or if there are multiple opponents, in the time that that point is embedded in them, you've now got to get that out. Now, as I said, I started thinking about this with the Spontoon Tomahawk. When I was thinking about comparing it to a normal hatchet bladed or axe bladed tomahawk. Now, funnily enough, with this axe here, we've kind of got both. We've got the spike and we've got the axe. Now, the advantage of hitting someone with the axe blade is yes, it might not go so deep, yes, it might not be so fatal, but when that axe blade goes in, it will go in a certain way, but due to its shape, it will be relatively easy to free itself most of the time, if not all of the time, depending where you've hit them and what they're wearing and things like that. But for the most part, when you strike an axe into, even if it's wood, you can free the axe relatively quickly. The problem with a point is it can go in deep and it can be a devil to get out. Now, one of the funny things is, in this regard, a sword is actually superior, I would say, to something like an axe or a war hammer, because at least when you've pushed the blade in, because it's in line with the arm, you can use all of your body weight and your legs and your hips and your shoulders and everything else to pull that blade back out and defend or to come in with another thrust or whatever you want to do. So you can lunge in with the point and you can extract out in one clean in-out motion. The problem with these weapons that strike with huge amounts of force and power is they go in at a right angle, but your leverage at pulling them out is really, really weak. If that's embedded in something, ugh, your ability to pull it back out again, very, very difficult. And you end up, as anybody who's ever slammed an ax into some wood and it's got stuck, you have to kind of wiggle it to get it back out again. Now, not to say that flesh, for example, would always grab a point as firmly as something like wood would, because I don't think it would, but <laughs> three woods in a row there. Um, but just to be aware of the fact that when that point goes in, it very well may get stuck and it may take you some time to get it back out. So for example, if you are fighting with tomahawks against someone else with a tomahawk, if you manage to get a successful hit, bam, on that person, in, for the rest of the duration of that fight, you might not be able to get that um, spontoon hawk out. This could even apply to an axe blade if an axe blade goes in deep enough. Okay, so you've got to think what happens at that point. I've embedded the weapon in there. They're now swinging back at me, potentially, assuming they don't just drop down dead. They're now swinging back at me with their weapon. I've got to block it somehow with my arm or let go of my tomahawk and step away. Or maybe you've got something in your left hand. Obviously, a shield will be perfect, but not so much of a uh, thing that was carried so much at this period. If you're carrying a musket, We've talked about the Gurkhas doing this, using the uh, rifle in the left hand as a parrying device while having the cookery in the right hand. So absolutely, you could put your musket in the way, or rifle. Um, you might have a bowie knife or something like a skinning knife, something else in your left hand you can use as a parrying device. So this is something to think about. If you've only got this one weapon and this embeds in the target, you've got to think about getting away from their likely resulting swing that comes after this and how do you free your weapon and when do you free your weapon. Final parting thought, this all relates, this all comes back to the medieval pole axe as well and you'll notice that many pole axes don't actually have a spike sticking out, they often have a hammer and an axe. So in this case they've combined one of the options of the war hammer, the hammer, and they have combined the other one of the battle axe, the axe. And you can kind of see why. Now, bear in mind, these were specialised armoured fighting weapons, and many of these pole axes, some of them do have a little point sticking out here, some of them have a long spike at the back, but many of them don't. Many just have a hammer and an axe. Think about why. Um, potentially, they don't want the spike getting stuck in things. Um, potentially, if they're striking against armour, they think that this is maybe a more useful thing to strike with because it doesn't get stuck. 
Same thing with the axe blade, and equally against unarmoured targets or lightly armoured targets, perhaps you might do more damage to the lightly armoured targets with the axe blade, and then you come up against an armoured guy, you switch it around and you smack them with a the hammer blade in the helmet or wherever. Um, so, lots to think about there. I'm not going to make any sweeping conclusions because I think there's different scenarios in different parts of the world at different times, and clearly these are two different weapons, but some of the considerations are the same. Often when you get a great advantage, like piercing potential, so penetration power with a swung point, you get a big disadvantage to balance it. If any one weapon was so advantageous with no disadvantages, everyone would be using it. But when you get a massive advantage, you often get a massive disadvantage as well. And in this case, I think the big problem with spikes, be it warhammers or tomahawks or anything else, is that they can get stuck in stuff. And that has very real implications for how you protect yourself in that time, in that tempo, when your weapon is now stuck in the opponent. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting and thought-provoking. See you again on the channel really soon. Cheers, folks.